Okay, so let's discuss our another application about indirect news vendor. In the previous application, we showed you that when when there are two players making their pricing decisions one by one in a supply chain, then the price will go on in inefficiently too high. Okay, the price will be too high. Here we're going to consider another situation. Not all of them are making pricing decisions. One of them will be a news vendor. We're going to show you that when there are two players here making their decisions one by one, the equilibrium order quantity or the equilibrium inventory level will be too low. Okay, let's see it. So suppose consumer demands are not certain now. So the retailer, let's assume, is a price taker. So the retailer cannot make a pricing decision because uh, the price has somewhat be fixed in this industry. Okay, but the retailer will be able to make inventory decisions for perishable products. So the retailer is selling a perishable products. It's just that now it procure the buy the product from a manufacturer. So the retailer buys from the manufacturer and the sales to consumers. There are several decisions to make. The manufacturer will choose the wholesale price W. Given that the retailer is exactly a news vendor, there is a fixed wholesale price or procurement cost. And then there is a random demand. We're going to use capital F and small f to denote the CDF and the PDF for the demand function. And there is a fixed retail price P. The retailer is to choose the order quantity or inventory level Q. Well, that's going to be her decision variable. So we certainly make some assumptions. Um, demand is non-negative and demand is continuous. Okay, just some technical assumptions. These two players, each of them wants to maximize their expected profit. For the manufacturer, uh, sorry, for the retailer, this is a news vendor problem. So I ask, um, what's the retailer's expected profit? P is the price, the retail price, the given retail price. And then Based on the order quantity or inventory level Q, I can say that the minimum of demand and my inventory level is my sales quantity. Okay? And then expected of that is my expected sales quantity. So the first turn is my expected sales revenue, and the second turn is my total cost. Okay? For the manufacturer, it's very similar. Uh, sorry, it's completely different. The manufacturer is facing a certain demand because the manufacturer can make the production after the retailer place an order. So the player is and uh, the retailer is going to order Q star units uh, where Q star is optimal for the retailer. And given that manufacturer makes the production and earns W minus C as the sales margin. Okay? So for the manufacturer, there is no demand uncertainty because the manufacturer can make production after the order is placed. Okay, so that's our um, uh, setting for this model. We want to ask in equilibrium, what will the manufacturer do? What's the wholesale price? What will the retailer do? What's the quantity? And are these outcomes uh, efficient, inefficient, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and uh, uh, is there any impl implications we may get from this model? So to make our life easier, let's assume the demand is uniformly distributed between 0 and 1, like this, and then let's focus on the retailer's part first. The retailer is facing exactly a news vendor problem. I have the average cost. I have the underage cost, right? Nothing really changed from our basic news vendor model. It's just that W now is controlled by some other guy. The other guy's decision is going to affect my profit because the manufacturer can choose a wholesale price to affect my profit. But given that the wholesale price has been determined, there's no problem for me. I can solve 
my news vendor problem directly with the well-known formula. My uh, let Q star W be my best response. Then I can say that my probability for having a shortage should be W over P. Okay, W is nothing but your overage cost, and the P is your sum of overage and underage cost. This is the basic formula we use for solving a news vendor problem. It's just that F here, the capital F here, is just Q. Okay, when you have a uniform distribution, then in that case, your capital F will just be X, while your small f will just be 1. Okay, I hope that you have no difficulty about it. So we can come up with this formula as player 2 or the retailer's best response to player 1, the manufacturer's decision. Given W, I'm going to order according to this formula, which should somehow be familiar to you as a basic news vendor solution. Okay, when this guy, when the manufacturer charges a higher wholesale price, I'm going to order fewer because that's the best way to optimize my profit. So now let's consider the manufacturer's problem. The manufacturer is going to predict that Q star will be 1 minus W over P. So the manufacturer solves again this simple convex program. Equilibrium wholesale price can be found as P plus C over 2. With that, the equilibrium order quantity da, 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 can be found by plugging W star into here. And after some derivations, we can show that it will be P minus C over 2P. Uh, let's say some more about this number. This number is actually 1 over 2 times P minus C over P. Okay? So, this number, of course, is positive. So the whole thing here is positive. Q is positive. That's good. Also, this number is less than 1. So the whole thing here is less than 1. We're not going to order more than the maximum possible demand. So somehow this Q star is reasonable. Okay, it's reasonable. Now, naturally, we want to ask if they cooperate and try to maximize the aggregate profit, can they do better? In this case, we don't really care about W, right? When we talk about aggregate profit, what really matters is Q, because for a higher or lower W, that just determine an internal transfer, determine how they share the profit inside the system. But we only uh, now we only care about the um, the the. the from the system's perspective, we want to maximize the total profit. Okay, so Q is really the indicator for system efficiency. So now let's think about it. Uh, for the inventory level, we know what is the optimal or the system optimal level. Okay, we should simply treat C as the input and P as the output of the whole system. We can group these two persons or the two uh, firms into a single system, a simple uh, supply chain. And then the input is C, the output is P. These are the parameters for this integrated news vendor problem. Given Q, we can earn some, uh, we can, we will affect our expected profit. So Q. The, the, the best Q somehow is determined by this ratio again. Oh, we can see that this is just a news vendor problem with uh, different parameters. And then you can see that for this quantity, this quantity is exactly one half of the equilibrium order quantity. What does that mean? For, uh, sorry, 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 let me say that again. The equilibrium order quantity is one half of the integrated quantity, okay, like this. So that means, uh, suppose they integrate, then they order a certain amount. And then if they become decentralized, 
the order quantity will become one half. Will become one half. Then immediately there is one thing we know: the order quantity is inefficient, or the decentralization is inefficient, because to maximize the system's profit, we should do, we should act as the two parties are integrated. Okay. So of course this p minus c over c is the best to do. If we want to maximize the system profit, but now we are doing something else. So that that cannot be efficient. That cannot maximize the system's profit. Okay. So we can say decentralization is inefficient. But then we want to ask several questions. First, from centralization to decentralization, is it always that the order quantity will become one half? Okay, that's something we want to ask. Or if it is not true, is it always the case that from centralization to decentralization, the quantity will become smaller? Okay, that's another question. You really uh need some analysis to answer these questions. Okay, because so far all the results we get based on the fact that the demand is uniform. But the demand can really be anything, right? And there are all kinds of, uh, all kinds of different distributions. You really need to analyze other distributions to see whether you can still have this particular result. Let's try to do it. So now they integrate, okay, as a single entity, and they only want to choose a small q. To maximize the system profit, but now let's assume D the demand is just a general demand. With that, we have this proposition. We can say that the efficient inventory level always satisfy this equality. This is just the, the the famous thing you know. This is the formula for determining the optimal news vendor quantity, right? C is the input, P is the output. This is exactly what you need. For proof, you probably want to look at it. It's just a formulation for the original problem, and then first order derivative, second order derivative. This has been done when we introduce inventory theory to you. Okay, so these are something old. You know, if we treat them as a whole, this is the optimal thing for them to do. Now it's time to uh study the. Decentralized case. Now, somewhat this this process will be slightly difficult because Q star on the retailer optimal inventory level cannot be right written down in a closed form because in general you don't know D, right? You don't know D, so you don't really have a Q star as、uh, you don't really have an expression, a closed form expression for Q star. Then you cannot have a closed form solution for W star, right? You need to know Q star, so that you can formulate the manufacturer's problem. But if you don't have it, you don't know how to express the optimal Q star and so on and so on. Okay, but now is the power of the model. We can say we can really show you that no matter what happens, no matter what's the probability distribution. As long as it is continuous, non-negative, and strictly increasing, then Q star will be smaller. From integration to decentralization, the quantity, the equilibrium quantity, must become smaller. Okay, let's try to prove it. Proof is very simple. I mean, the idea is very simple. The retailer orders by considering the procurement cost. When we are doing centralization or integration, the cost is the production cost C, and of course that's uh somehow small. And then when we change to decentralization, because the manufacturer wants to earn something, the wholesale price must somewhat be larger than C, and because the procurement cost for the retailer becomes higher, the retailer will order fewer. Okay, that's the concept. Technically, first we can show that f of q star must be one minus w over p. Okay, 
this is something we know. And then this uh, somehow tells you that as long as W is greater than C, then this probability will be lower than the probability with the system optimal quantity. Why? Suppose W is greater than C, then we have this inequality, right? Or we have this inequality. This is just algebra. And on the left hand side, this is the probability with Q star. And on the right hand side is the probability with Q uh, optimal Q. So once we have it, we want to ask, uh, how does capital F tell us, the, uh, allow us to compare Q star and the Q first best? Okay, so here, suppose this is our f function. We know f function is somewhat increasing. So if that's the case, and we say, um, okay, f of q star is less than f of q first best, okay, then q star will be less than q first best. Okay, so let me do a brief summary again. This is the thing that we may derive, right? When we have a decentralized supply chain, this will uh, somehow, this formula, this equality will tell the retailer how to make an order. It will order Q star to satisfy this equality. And then for this equality, and another equality for the first best situation, we can show that the probability will go down, okay? And then because f is strictly increasing, q star will be smaller. This is very interesting. Uh, the fact with one half, on the fact that q star is one half of q first best, really depends on the assumption of uniform distribution, okay? But the fact that Q star will be smaller than Q first best is really universal. No matter what's your distribution, this is going to happen. We say that this is an insight that we may get from this model. The model tells us that when we move to decentralization, the supply quantity or the inventory level will simply become smaller for the system's perspective. And then decentralization will always introduce inefficiency. This is similar to double marginalization. Um, if the manufacturer is, is so nice, if the manufacturer is willing to earn nothing, he can set the wholesale price to be exactly C, and then the retailer will order the system optimal quantity. But that's not going to happen. The manufacturer needs to earn some money. So the manufacturer will make the wholesale price slightly larger, and then quantity will become smaller. Again, this is similar to double marginalization. You may also think about from centralization to decentralization. What happens to customers? For customers, now the price is identical. Okay. So what really matters to the consumer welfare is only the inventory level. Consumers, of course, prefer a high inventory level. So does decentralization uh, benefit or hurt consumers? From centralization to decentralization, unfortunately, the quantity becomes smaller. Okay, So decentralization hurt consumers. Because the retailer is going to store less in his retail store. So consumers are hurt with decentralization. And then we will ask, okay, is there any solution to resolve this inefficiency? Okay, this is a decentralization system. May we provide any kinds of incentive to, 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 to eliminate the inefficiency? Uh, may we provide incentive to induce more efficient behaviors? Uh, that will be the topic we're going to discuss in the next week. But for this week, uh, just know that uh, there are dynamic games. To solve dynamic games, we move 
from the last stage to the first stage. That's backward induction. At each stage, we are solving a decision problem or an optimization problem. Typically, we will be able to solve it and then feed that outcome or the prediction back to the previous stage and so on and so on. After we solve the whole dynamic game, we have the equilibrium outcome and we may do some interpretations about it or some insights like this. We're going to discuss more in the lecture. I'm going to give you some more e explanations about these models, uh, some more discussions, some more derivations, some more practices, and then uh, we will move back to the incentive issue one week later. Okay, thank you.